I'm Tanil. And I'm Kelsey. And we're financial advisors from Allman Partners True Wealth, bringing you thought provoking conversations around you, your money, and your life on the Wealth Experience Podcast. Business owners, this one is for you. So business owners are often so busy focusing on their business or working in it. And for this reason, it's very easy for your personal life planning to fall to the bottom of that list. And we see it all the time. Um, You know, Tanil and I, we're probably guilty of this ourselves as well at times. Um, So for today's podcast, we'd like to talk a little bit about financial planning for business owners and how it can add that incremental value for the long-term success um, personally and talk to some of the common behavioural traits that can either be helpful um, but also hindering and achieving what's important to them. Mm, Absolutely. Well, most business owners, they do have some form of long-term plan or vision for where they want to go to. You know, for many, it's not just about I'm I'm opening a business and let's hope for the best. Um, And they do have those small milestones along the way to help them achieve getting to where they want to be. That's right. Um, and they may sit down and actually assess how they're going against that business planning. Not not all, um, but for many business owners, they will actually stop and take a look back in the rearview mirror and say, okay, how have we done maybe over the last year and what's ahead? Um, and there's certain things that uh, we see which are commonalities, things like revisiting vision and mission statements. Um, and that's all part of, you know, good for, good um, business planning, isn't it, Kels? Exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. And those same, those same principles, they should apply your personal life um, as well to get the get what you want for your future. So w- when we're talking about this business planning, um, it, it, it's also about for a personal sense, how do I map out the goals, my personal goals, and how do I figure out the best way to get there? And um, that's where, you know, a financial advisor can also come in and help out. That's exactly right. And I think sometimes, you know, it's easy to forget as a business owner that you also have to plan your business and your personal life kind of at the same time, yeah. to, to a certain extent. Um, so really your business planning should be taken into, you know, what do you want from your personal life, particularly when it comes to succession, you know, when are you thinking about retiring and all of those areas or, or scaling back perhaps. Um, that's a whole other conversation that we won't jump into today, but there are some reca- reoccurring themes amongst this group of, you know, really amazing driven individuals that can be a, a very real barrier amongst this group to take that step and seek advice, um, potentially at the cost of not maximising what they've worked hard for to achieve for a really long time. So let's talk about some of these and listeners, you might be able to relate and hopefully it sparks some new ways of thinking about planning for your life too. So um, let's kick off with the first topic that we'd like to talk about and that's business shouldn't be the only retirement plan. Mm. It is It is a big one because if uh, you've got clients or, or people that have um, invested a lot of money, particularly too, so um, I might actually step that back and kind of go, well, when when somebody walks through the door and they're having a chat with you, Kels, about I want to buy a business, mm-hmm. um, typically there's, there's a goal in mind, right? And that has something to do with income, yeah? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And um, one of the one of the traps just at the very starting point is, um, you know, and, and a key item here is if you're going to start out in a business, um, maybe you should have an assumption that I'm not going to get paid really well to do that from point one as well. Um, so just just one commonality I do find is that, um, you know, if we're starting out a business now, I'm actually going to need to inject some money into this um, and it, most likely. And I should probably assume that what you know, do I have a plan in place that if I if I'm not paid for the first twelve months or the first two years, or I've got those big tax bills that I've actually got something there? So, just wanted to kind of float that one because I do see that as a common trap that occurs. Um, but once we've gotten past that now, and it's this big asset that I've got, I'm putting money into it over time. I'm reinvesting the earnings that I've got. I'm, I'm building something for my future. Um, it can't be my only asset, though, can it, Kels? No, absolutely not. Because you know, most business owners they possess the trait of optimism, and you have to have that yeah. because you know, you're taking on a, a lot of risk, um, less risk in some businesses, but you've got to be optimistic about, you know, putting your energy and your time and your money into it. Yeah. Um, so that is a good trait to have, but what it can mean is that you're actually overconfident in what this is going to achieve for you financially and, and your lifestyle. Um, so yeah, look, I think that yeah, just I- making sure that you're not relying on it solely 
So, you know, it's just like saying you're going to put all of your eggs in one basket and that's not the investment philosophy that we, we adopt mm. and that applies the same to the business principles around, you know, planning for your wealth. Yeah, and I think, um, and we've, we've seen this a lot. So we've seen uh, business owners that um, have, have, have put everything into their businesses over time, built something that's really amazing um, and it has been a good income generation tool for them but you don't want to get to the point where 30 years down the track you're, you're looking around going, oh, and, and now what am I going to do if this asset is not valued at where I where I originally thought it was going to be? You know, I, I thought maybe I'd leave this with a million dollars in my hand. Um, and the, the climate's different now. Um, have I actually got the ability to sell it for what I thought I could? And so you're absolutely right. Along the way, if I can be extracting some of that value and starting to diversify my capital outside of the business. So by saying, okay, instead of injecting 100% back in and and building this this business to be much, much bigger, just take a portion of that and start, start to work with your tax agent and, and bring those funds out and go, now what else can I do with them? Can I build another the asset and investment account, some some of my superannuation, so that I have something there that if something happens to the business tomorrow, I'm still I'm still going to be okay. But ultimately, when I do retire, that I don't just have that one asset. Absolutely, and I think in that type of strategy as well can also help if you know you are going through a period of time in the business. It might be just twelve months, twenty four months, where you're having some cash flow issues, or you had to reinvest back in the business. Mm. Well, look if at you've COVID. diversified exactly right, and if you've diversified outside of that, and you're building your capital somewhere else you've kind of got another emergency pool to fall back on mm. if you have to. Mm. Um, so let's jump on to the next topic, topic which is um, making sure that you have a magic circle of professionals around you. So it sounds really nice. <laughs> it does. It sounds very fancy. Um, but every business owner should have or, you know, or will have an accountant and a solicitor at some point in time um, and they're necessary for running your business. If you're running a good business, you absolutely need those people. Um, but let's talk a little bit about what happens when you actually inject a great advisor into that space too. Mm -hmm. um, so let me give you an example. So if we think about your accountant and your solicitor, they're critical, but they don't really know what your personal goals are necessary. And they're not really taking those into consideration when you're having conversations with them because it's not part of their job role. So where a financial advisor comes in is that they can actually add the value in those different stages of your business life, life cycle, um, such, such as the succession and expansion. But I'll give you an example so you can connect the dots here. So I've got an example um, where uh, I experienced recently, I sat down with a, a prospective um, business owner and we mapped out all of their personal goals. Step one, try to understand, you know, who are you and what do you want to achieve in your life? What's important? And one of these included stepping back from the business that they've built you know, and put a time frame to that, maybe around five years. Um, five years goes really, really quickly. Mm. Um, and they wanted to obtain some kind of passive income stream um, because they're exhausted. As with a lot of business owners, you do get fatigued and they do want to take that step back. And it was very clear that that was one of the most important goals to them. Did they know that before they came and spoke to you? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I feel like both the, the husband and the wife very much agreed and that was one of the things that they'd said. It's a bit of a catalyst of for goals. getting advice. Absolutely, yeah. yep. Um, but then during the rest of the conversations, they actually started touching upon, you know, well, we do have this extra capital in the business and we're thinking about reinvesting it back in and, and buying a, a premises so we can grow. Now, isn't that contradictory to perhaps... Yeah what they're thinking about in terms of scaling back. So, and that might not be the case. They might be able to re-inject that capital back in, grow the business and then step back. Yeah. And they, they may be able to do that in five years. Yeah. So you're saying they wanted that time and but their, their key focus at that point was actually... I'm going to put money back into the business and, and that's going to make it bigger and take more of my time. Potentially, but yeah. it was one of those kind of ideas that they had that they wasn't too sure if it was something they should be doing. Yeah, okay. But I think, you know, their natural instinct was to you know, keep pushing the business, let's keep going. But it was contrary to what their personal goals were. Mm. So I think, first of all, the important job of an advisor is to actually flag that yeah. and say, well, how would that actually impact um, your ability to scale back in five years, you want to take a step back, do you think that's possible? Mm. Um, and when you raise that, immediately they were like, probably not, yeah. actually. Um, and then the next step to that conversation is to go, well, let's have a look at what the other option is because we now need to go and have a talk with your accountant and find out well, how much of this capital that you've got in there is actually accessible. What's the best way that we actually draw that out to both of them as the business owners? And then what can we do 
with the capital to be able to get you closer to your goals mm. and compare those two scenarios of reinvesting back in the business. So, you know, not invest in a lump sum capital they've got versus using that. And our job is to give them a clearer understanding of taking those next steps before they do. Yeah. And without a financial advisor, if you're just going to go to your accountant and say, we've got this money in the business, we're thinking about buying a premises, they're just going to look at the numbers. And I think that that's the real value of opening up the conversations and making sure that everything they're doing is aligning with what they actually want to achieve personally too. Yeah. And even if they did, so back to the back to the comment that I made about business coaches and business advisors. So, um, you know, having a, having a business plan is, is critical. That's what we we're talking about at the start. And, and a business coach and a business advisor, they're going to help you achieving those business goals. But there's a really key element there that you're talking about, Kels, where you're saying um, it's if I if my business goals are not, correlating with my personal goals I'm not going to end up end up with the right overall financial plan that gets me to what's most important to me absolutely yeah Yeah. and off the back of that you're probably going to find that um, you haven't optimized your situation and you're probably not as happy as you should have been if you'd made the right decision informed decisions Mm. along the way because Mm. in this life I think it's very easy to just get pushed into decisions thinking they're the right ones for you know whatever reasons because of the society that we live in Um, but that's not true to the core of who we are and what we want from our lives and I think it's really easy to not reflect on that so that's definitely one of the key jobs that we have to do is to really draw that out. Mm, Absolutely yeah. 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 Okay so let's talk about the next topic which is a delegation and control. Tanil if you want to have some input on this one. Are you saying that because you think that I'm a bit of a control freak? Or? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, look, it, it, you were talking about at the start that um, business owners, they, they're usually very savvy, they're optimistic, they, they, they take charge kind of people in the most sense. Um, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of business, small business owners that if they're doing a startup kind of business, it might be, it might be husband and wife or, or, or partner situation that one of them has more of those BDM style st- skills. They have the ability to go out there you know, win business, talk to people, generate uh, re- revenue and all of that. And you might have uh, the other partner that d- is behind the scenes to do all the book work. They make the, they actually make the business hum, um, but you might not see them on the front lines as much. Um, and so what can happen for many business owners is um, that you've got to get to a point really that a release of control <laughs> might be necessary because I'm so used to, I do everything, I, I, I look after the place, um, I've got customers and clients that they, they see me and they love me and, and suppliers that they know me um, and delegation becomes a really key in, in, in a lot of these facets. Um, and it starts out from saying that, well, there are certain aspects that I'm going to need to be able to delegate to be able to get back my time. Because for many business owners, a key um, theme that we seem to see is a lack of time. Um, so delegation is going to be key for success along the way. Um, and this can this can also translate then across to your personal finances then to go, well, if I am so used to running the books and, and doing everything for the business, um, I... I'm probably not used to delegating control for my finances to somebody else and then and then putting my trust and my faith in in an external party to give me some solutions that are going to make this um, a, a much better outcome for us. Uh, so is is that helpful? Yeah, and I think um, you know that can happen because especially with really successful business owners, I think they've reaffirmed to themselves along the way that look at what a great job I've done of achieving all of these things. Yeah. I don't need anybody else to help me with my personal finances. I've got this. Um, but you're only an expert. You can't be an expert in absolutely every field. Mm. Um, so I think that that can absolutely be a barrier to achieving what you want to achieve in your personal life if you're not ready to delegate other areas. Yeah. Um, and maybe there's a, 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 a bit of a fear um, in some of those situations as well around, um, you know, peeling back the layers of the onion and actually looking at what's happening there. And the job of an advisor Absolutely. is actually to go, well, what you're doing is is excellent. You know, there's there's parts of, of, um, of the business, the way that you're running things that is, is wonderful. Um, but now it's about how do we make these additions so that it fits in with what you want to achieve in your life. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, we're not saying that, you know, delegation and not delegating and having full control is necessarily a bad thing because there's definitely times in business where that's 
necessary depending on what, what stage you're at and, yeah, and what business you're yeah. running but and it's probably good to get those learnings um earlier on as well if you do have a, a business that you don't intend on walking out the door and selling it at some point in time right because there's there's probably two key ways that, that somebody's going to exit a business on their own terms obviously we're not talking about they've had to because of health reasons or whatnot mm-hmm. but if I'm choosing now to to leave the business and move on to other ventures or, or retire um, it's either going to be because I'm selling it so I'm going to choose somebody out there in the market and they're going to going to pay me a sum of money to take this over um, or I'm going to do that through succession planning Mm -hmm. and succession planning says I find the right person that's going I'm going to skill them up get them to a position where they're ready to take this over from me and it might be a bit of a handover process but uh, that's not going to work unless you're able to delegate some of your key aspects to that next person coming through or people coming through right yeah absolutely yeah absolutely so the next one uh, the next topic we had was being stuck on a number so let's say you you have a financial plan and you know what your capital target is that you've got to get to to fund all your retirement needs. Um, and at some stage, it's time to sell the business or an offer comes on the table um, and it's greater than what you needed to do all the things that you wanted to do. So let's say, throw some numbers at it, your capital target was uh, $3 million. You need $3 million by age 60 to live off for the rest of your life. But to sell your business, you was offered $5 million. Oh, that's great. That's, that's, that's yeah. got a, got a That makes sense. Nice why, outcome. Why yeah. wouldn't you take <laughs> it? Um, but there is people that have, you know, worked really hard. They really believe that their business is worth much more than what they're being offered mm. without even considering how much do I actually need from this because they've got so much um, emotional attachment. It's their baby. It's something that they've grown over time. Mm. Um but then what can happen, and there has been examples of this, is, you know, they decided, I'm not taking it. I can get more for the business. Mm. Anyway, the next buyer that comes along, well, now they're offering you $1.5 million because the conditions have changed. It's not worth that anymore. Yeah, and this is um, where that fear and greed can really slip in and, and, and stifle our decision-making processes. Absolutely. And now you're in a position where it's not going to fund the things that you wanted to do in your life. So you're going to have to make some adjustments. Maybe you've got to work for longer or spend less in retirement because you were stuck on this number, which... There's no, what does that number mean? Yeah. I mean, alternatively, we've seen scenarios where um, the, the larger number is completely achievable, but at the at the expense of something else as well. So when it comes to that good planning too, um, I've seen those situations where um, small business tax concessions, for example. So there are small business CGT concessions that exist mm-hmm. um, to help businesses as they're, they're selling out and they're, they're making those transitions um, to, to pay less in taxes. And let's let's be honest, no, none of us really want to pay the tax man any more than he's owed. I haven't met anyone that wants to yet, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, and so if we don't get that sale number right and we're just aiming for the top figure, that can actually hinder us because there are some some key numbers that you can't go over in terms of net asset positions in a lot of cases Mm -hmm. to get access to those small business concessions. So you might have a scenario where you could sell the business for four million dollars and pay no tax or I sell the business for five million dollars and I'm going to pay you know uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars of taxes on it just because of the capital gain is now totally accessible. Yeah so Um, your net money in your back pocket is going to be Therefore, less. Yeah, it could, could so, ultimately be the case. So, absolutely. yeah, I can definitely see that the the concept there really needs to be that what what does your number need to be, and how do we how do we plan for this? Um, get the round table because when you're doing an exit of a business, too, it's not just about the tax age. It's not just about the solicitor. Not but, you know all of these parties and and your financial advisor need to work closely together to to have a plan for leaving. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, your accountant will do the numbers. Your solicitor is going to do all the legals in tidying that up. But your advisor is the person that's going to be there in the corner fighting for you saying, come back to your why. Yeah. Why are you doing this? Why are you saying that? What have you wanted to achieve? Does it get you there? Mm. And I think that that's really the special part of our job in those situations. But the other professionals in the finance space aren't doing because it's just not part of their role. And I think, you know, it's really easy for business owners too to go, well, I've got an accountant. That's all I need. Yeah, so. and because they're, and they're in that, that position of trust. So mm. um, it's certainly a key, like we're talking about, it's a key element, it's a key role there. Um, but you've got to tie it all back to to you as the centre, not um, not just the tax tax laws and not just the, the legalities of it, but what my why. So 
Yeah, absolutely right, Tanil. So if we had to sum up how an advisor can add value to business owners, it would be to help you see the bigger picture. So whilst your head's down in the business, we're kind of looking at everything else for you in terms of the bigger picture of your life and your goals. Um, We're saying that it's also not uncommon for owners to solely focus on business finances and neglect their own, Um, but a good advisor will be able to help you plan your personal finances in consideration of your business finances and also work alongside your accountant to bring all of that together Um, and also they'll help you clarify your personal goals and continue to refocus on these and how you get there yeah anything else to nail being a business owner yourself for a little while now yeah look i think i think you're 100 on the on the money there um being able to talk to somebody that you can trust. So again, it's just about how how do I find somebody that I can really trust to go along this entire journey with me because it's not just what happens today, it's what's going to happen 10 years down the track as well. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for joining us on today's podcast. Next time we have something a little different for you, so stay tuned. The opinions of the presenters are objectively ascertainable and are not intended to be financial product or personal advice. 